不有就是没多长，最少定西宁的干巴的三界神都没得，不好的地，这个那么大心拉去吧，不如那那明的，不应该的。
Speaking generally, uh, it, it, it is the position, the position is held that um, we cannot achieve uh, the ultimate goal of Buddhahood without resorting to the highest yoga tantra path. And um, related to that, it is asserted that uh, the highest yoga tantra path from the point of view of uh, view is um, incorporates the prasangika uh, position on the nature of reality ultimate truth uh, so sort of some general uh, elements um, then more specifically uh, uh, in the Sutrayana, uh, the Buddha's uh, Rupakaya is described. Uh, one one way of describing it is the, uh, the physical form that has the thirty-two major marks and the secondary marks, and so each one of those uh, qualities in, in canonical literature, I believe. Is gives specific actions that are conducive to the attainment of each one of the particular marks. So that, uh, one of them is that uh, going to uh, lengths to uh, greet your teacher, like going out to meet them and accompany the teacher when they leave. Such uh, physical acts are. Uh, are one example of the type of behavior that is considered, in some sense, a causal factor for achieving some of the uh, aspects of Buddha's physical body. 
So from the point of view of highest yoga tantra, that is not accepted because it is said that the nature of that, the causes of that physical body must have some form that corresponds to the nature of that physical body itself. There must, there must be some similarity uh, in, its, uh, in its aspect. And those particular acts don't particularly uh, exhibit that. So you can talk about that for one thing. Uh, and then more specifically, uh, the direct cause for achieving a Buddha's physical, physical body uh, is then a, a purified form of subtle air. <coughs> and that subtle air being the um, basis for the deity's body. And uh, so that subtle physical air is um, has two two stages to it. One uh, that's called the impure uh, illusory body, and the one that later is called the pure illusory body. So the impure illusory body. One of the things that's said about it is that even when it's attained, if that's something that it is, is finite and that it possess that type of illusory, an illusory body, but because of its character, it will cease, it will come to a point of, uh, like, end of its existence, and then uh, it will be replaced by the pure form of the illusory body, and that becomes then the real direct cause of the Buddha's uh, physical. So, um, with that subject is, Understanding that topic it is how that claim is what supports that claim. What is the basis for that claim? And how do you understand that point? Uh, that day, I mean, you need to change the regular sense and 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 sense マリバチャキマリバチャタンサミレレテネクシャバギネティテチェンサンチレワティティアティイゲサンギギネスブイサンギンディクチェトゥマレチェンワティインディクネネパジティバレマシャブギネチシャウエワティソウアムアナザー <coughs> Description that is comes, uh, similar to and is uh, related to the points that were just made are the fact that uh, the, the major marks and the secondary marks uh, are, are, are not unique to a Buddha. In fact, uh, bodhisattvas uh, prior to their enlightenment even in the Sutra Yama people are described as possessing them in some sort of lesser form, but they're referred to by the same name. And uh, so what, what is described about them is to say that the causes for those qualities that are possessed by a Bodhisattva can be possessed by a Bodhisattva uh, before enlightenment. And the fact is that those the, the, the causes, the karma, is um, accompanied by uh, the uh, traces of ignorance. So the person is still subject to the traces of ignorance. And the karma that is the, the cause that produces them is also um, yeah, there's a kind of karma which is called um, uncontaminated karma. Uh, and then, uh, but it's um, there's something something about look. Can you see that you get some to So so those are the principal causes for those uh, physical attributes as they are uh, achieved by an 
both stuff from prior to enlightenment. But uh, it, despite the fact that those are the kinds of causes for those attributes, it is not the continuum. The uh, ring jia means the similar quality of, of the continuum that um, is naturally culminates in a Buddhist system. Like it's it's not uh, accepted that those represent that. So uh, that's kind of. Uh, the Nyelen Gigu. だ、もう、もう、で、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私
mental in nature, mental in the sense of a, a, you know, a manifest form of mind. So there is an element of the mind in, in, in the sense that it, its uh, potential uh, or its propensity to become manifest. That also is, represents part of the substantial cause. And so as an example of that, uh, when we are sleeping, during sleep, uh, typically we go into a state of uh, you know, some, uh, unconscious state of mind. There is a mind present there, conscious of it, but the mind is present. There's no sensory conscious at that time. So sensory consciousness are during the time of sleep, especially deep sleep, they don't exist. But when you awaken, right, then you're going to uh, be able to develop sensory consciousness again. So what becomes the source for that sensory consciousness during waking sleep? So it's saying that the, those propensities, those uh, sort of dormant elements of your sensory consciousness still reside in your mind. And so they become part of the, what we would call the substantial cause for subsequent uh, manifest forms of sense consciousness. So both elements can be uh, identified as part of the substantial cause. And then beyond that, the general meaning of substantial cause, for those of you who might like to hear that, in the case of a seed, the seed possesses in the potential form the capacity to develop into the sprout. And so in that sense, the seed is the substantial cause for the sprout. And the cooperating factors that are necessary for that to occur are you know, the incidental uh, elements of the, you know, the field or the medium in which the seed is planted. Uh, that is, yeah, George, Jessica. George, and one more, one more question. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more question. Yeah. <coughs> I did. It. Oh, <laughs> they are right. Uh, Yeah, 
ที่จึงได้ที่จิตใจจึงไปจึงมีจิตทุกใจเลยจึงได้ตาจิตจึงไปตาจิตจึงไปทุกใจจึงไปเออจึงมีจิตทุกใจเลยจวบซึ่งจะทำให้ตัวเองเชื่อถือจิตจึงไปจึงมีจึงมีจิตทุกใจเลยเออตาจิตจึงได้ยินดีจุยจุยจีดีสังเกตจิตสุนทรีตาจีนี่ตาจีสิบตัวจีจีสิบตาจีกันตาจีสิบตาจีจีสิบตาต้องไปกินมีจุดจีจีบ้างเออจะติดเกิดเลยจีสิบตาจีต้องไปกินมีอันนี้เกี่ยวกับตาจีต้องไปชมาต้องไปชมาเสนอจ้าต้องไปกินมีเสนอจ้าจีบอะไรเกี่ยวกับตาจีต้องบัดเสร็จเช่นนี้ก็คุ้มไปอีกบ้างทุกอย่างตาจีนี่จะเจอเรื่องดีลูกดอกเลยลูกดอกเมื่อลุงจูนี่เนี่ยลุงจูนกันเนี่ยลุงจูนกับเนี่ยต้องบัดเสร็จจินเดจจีจีเช่นนี้ก็คุ้มยินดีฟังไปเข้าไปเข้าไปสุนทรีจะชิบหน้าเลยจีจีดีลุงจูนตีบ้าเราเคยรู้จักกันตั้งแต่ยังไม่ถูกยาติดเชื้อใช่ไหมแต่นี่ชินซ่านี่ชินซ่าโอเคสมมติ there were two uh, the two uh, series of presentations of the four attributes one in one order one in the reverse order and each one of them uh, then is uh, plays a role in Uh, the process of establishing that the Buddha is a, a flawless spiritual authority, flawless, or he's a spiritual authority, and we can think of when we use the word flawless, we're, we mean in fact someone who can be recognized as a spiritual authority. All right, semi ego means a a true a person who who is a, a valid source of. Spiritual knowledge. So we covered uh, in prior sessions mainly the first two clauses of the first series of those four epithets, namely that the excellent or um, and most excellent attitude can uh, be cultivated to its culmination. And the most excellent uh, form of practice, uh, spiritual practice of knowledge, wisdom, uh, can lead to uh, a uh, state of uh, unlimited knowledge. And uh, so, those two elements of the discussion have all been uh, covered to some degree. So now, the latter two attributes, both the ones <coughs> about That, we, that address the epithet sugata and the epithet of being a savior uh, are remain. That the river did it me is ready. Tumba sang it to the chitty, semi kiku yinti. Samba, hm, any kaza. ตั้งแต่เด็กตั้งแต่เด็กตั้งแต่เด็กตั้งแต่เด็กตั้งแต่เด็กตั้งแต่เด็กตั้งแต่เด็กตั้งแต่เด็กตั้งแต่เด็ก
Muni Tamu to the Purishir of Jungu Yiti. Some tender shiva, shiva come at the Niji Chimber, Niji Chimber, Niji Chimber, Niji Chimber, Tuji Tamitusukutubishira Niji only di tap di tap shin So uh, this is from uh, Denda Haramba's text that has, was referred to before. And um, uh, one portion of his text um, addressing uh, how to establish, how to prove uh, that the teacher uh, is is omniscient. And the teacher is someone who has attained the Buddha Shakyamuni. The teacher of Buddha Shakyamuni has attained uh, the, the, the omniscience of enlightenment. Uh, and um, so he formulates, this end up on the author formulates four ways of uh, for reasons, or he, he addresses those attributes that we've already talked about, uh, causes and the results, uh, as in, in, in a particular way to describe an argument that's meant to uh, kind of uh, clarify, as he, uh, as he saw it, uh, the, the, the force of what those epithets represent. So he form, formulates an argument in the following wording. Um, so uh, once you read it from the text, I actually happen to have a translation of it, so I can read what the text says. So it says, uh, uh, it starts out, the argument has a subject, right? So consider as a subject the Bodhisattva who possesses the same mind continuum as that of Buddha Shakyamuni. So it's saying, this is talking about a cause. So the first step is that is the person who has a desire to benefit the world. So uh, then what I'm describes, or more specifically, as um, that someone who is at the very beginning of the path, uh, that consider the Bodhisattva who is part of the same mind continuum as Buddha Shakyamuni. So go back to the time when Buddha Shakyamuni was at the beginning of the path right after uh, he has entered the accumulation path. So that means he has achieved bodhicitta, so he possesses the great compassion uh, in that sense. And then it says, <coughs> the, way you, the way he writes the, art, uh, the argument, is he then the predicate of this argument is that that bodhisattva, at the beginning of the past, <coughs> is capable of developing the wisdom that directly perceives selflessness, right? And that's the second attribute of this quality, the attribute of being a teacher. Uh, and then he says more specifically, uh, um, <coughs> and that second attribute is described in the uh, in the Pramanavartika uh, as the epithet of the quote, the teacher, because uh, then he is capable of developing that knowledge because he is a novice bodhisattva. Uh, 
right? He's at the beginning of the path. He's a novice bodhisattva who is under the influence of great compassion. Uh, <coughs> and that great compassion is uh, alluded to and taught in the section of the second chapter that describes that bodhisattva as being the one who is desirous of benefiting the world. So that's the argument. And then he gives an example, right? So one of the elements of the arguments is to formulate a, a, a proper concordant example that supports uh, the argument, the thesis of the argument. And so it says this, re this example is described as follows. So this resembles the manner in which a skilled physician uh, is driven by compassion uh, to seek the means of curing the illness of a sick person who is depending upon him, depending on him or her, the physician, to do so. <clears throat> and then this entire uh, argument, right? Then, the, so, okay. So the example is that the physician uh, who wants to find the means of curing someone's illness, that someone means the world, right? He's, he's desirous of helping the world in that sense, their illness. Uh, so then he seeks the knowledge that will enable him to do so. And that, because he has compassion that is motivating him to find that, that knowledge. And so then, and then, then the discussion where it says, and this entire argument is explained in um, <clears throat> In the section of the chapter, the second chapter, starting from, and then he makes reference to that initial um, uh, line which says, the proof of the possibility of attaining enlightenment is achieved through the cultivation of compassion. It starts with chapter 34 and continues up to the end of that entire section, which is in verse 131. So it says, that portion of the entire chapter is addressing this part. Mm. あ、ばにばてにて。あ、あれ、ま、にばてにて。あ、あれ、ま、にばてにて。あ、あれ、ま、にばてにて。あ、あれ、ま、にばてにて。あ、あれ、ま、にばてにて。あ、あれ、ま
and, and those will result in uh, abandoning all the obstacles and endowing such a person, therefore, with the ability to, in fact, uh, fulfill the aim of wanting to benefit the world. Here, the arguments are uh, <coughs> are formulated in a more uh, specific way, or more uh, 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 a slightly different way. So, in the, the second argument is relating to the second epithet, the quality of being teacher. So the argument that says, then, the first argument said, the Bodhisattva who's just entered the path of accumulation. And so that person must have great compassion, that's the meaning of the first uh, epithet, and says that person is capable of developing the second attribute, which is the attribute of being a teacher, right? Which means capable of attaining direct realization of emptiness because he's driven by compassion to seek that. Then the second argument starts by saying uh, the Bodhisattva, who is the same mind continuum as the Buddha, Shakyamuni, who is the enlightened one, the, the person who is the ultimate spiritual authority, so the, the Bodhisattva, who is the mind continuum of Buddha Shakyamuni, but not at the beginning of the path, but rather at the point of having achieved the seeing path, right, and not only the seeing path, but the, um, the, the uh, liberation aspect of the seeing path. Remember we described that that direct realization of wisdom is the direct antidote to the, uh, to the uh, obscurations, and then once those obscurations are uh, destroyed, then that wisdom takes on the quality of being called the path of liberation. Right? So that's what we're referring to. So the, the Bodhisattva who has reached the Mahana path of seeing at the point where he or she has succeeded in abandoning the first element of the obstacles uh, to attain enlightenment. So it says the, the person who is the same mind continuum as Buddha Shakyamuni has attained the path of seeing that is referred to as the path of liberation. That's the subject. Consider that person. Okay. Uh, then he, uh, he is, uh, that is the person who, that's what means that that is a person who has attained the quality uh, that is referred to by the epithet teacher, the teacher. He has now has that wisdom uh, that directly perceives emptiness and has eliminated some portion of the obstacles. Okay, that person, he is capable, he or she is capable of developing the three kinds of abandonment that are associated with the episode known as Sugata, which is the third episode, right? So that means the one uh, who has attained the ultimate state of well-being because, uh, and the reasons why, because he's a Bodhisattva who has attained the path of seeing and has perceived selflessness directly. So saying the fact that he's reached that uh, level of realization renders him or her capable of abandoning the remainder of the obstacles and therefore becoming a Sugata. That's the argument. Okay? And then he gives the example. It says, this resembles uh, the, the manner in which a skilled physician cures uh, the illness of a sick person. So once the physician then achieves the qualities of, of the abandonment of any limitations to his ability or her ability to cure the person, then he's uh, able to do so. And then and then the, the kind of final remark is that it identifies the verses where this attribute, the attribute of being the teacher, the second of the four, uh, is uh, described in the chapter, which is from verse 32, which begins with <coughs> the compassionate one, and we read this earlier, the compassionate one, uh, applies himself <coughs> in order to abandon suffering. And it continues up to verse 139. So this discussion is covers seven chapter, seven verses, <coughs> or I guess to simply be eight verses. And uh, then and then it ends with, so that means this section on the sec second episode ends with the line which says, these two 
meaning the desire to benefit the world and the quality of being the teacher, uh, are referred to as causes. That line says these two are referred to as causes. So that marks the end of the discussion of that second. <coughs>
um, the perfection of others' aims, perfection of others' aims, uh, uh, as is represented by the fourth attribute, which is the attribute being the savior, right? And so uh, the, the the notion of being the savior is identified with in this argument the moment following that when the nirmanakayas are emanating. Nirmanakaya's at the first moment of enlightenment are have not yet been emanated. Then, uh, yet, when the first moment of enlightenment is achieved, that subsequent moment when the Nirmanakaya's can be emanated, and, and at which point they will represent the quality of being the savior, because the Nirmanakaya's are the, are the ones who uh, teach the, uh, to uh, others. Uh, so, uh, that predicate is that uh, when they reach that point of enlightenment, they're capable of developing that aspect of becoming or of, of manifesting in the human class. Why? Because uh, they've attained the status, the ultimate, the status of the ultimate abandonment, uh, where all the three forms of, of obstacles uh, are fully. Uh, eliminated and therefore uh, one, there's nothing to prevent one from becoming the savior who teaches others. Uh, and then the example for that is uh, uh, then the person uh, who has become a skillful physician, right? So one, when you become enlightened then you're the supreme physician and that supreme physician uh, will uh, 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 will carry out the act of saving the lives of those persons who are ill and will do so uh, without uh, having to be honored or ha without having to be requested or without uh, the need of anyone uh, then, uh, showing himself. Nibler uh, means then to be to, to make offerings to him, oh, please save me, or, or, or uh, to make the request to be saved, the, the Supreme Physician will just do so out of his compassion. So once that ultimate knowledge or are the one so obstacles have been eliminated, there is nothing to prevent that person, that being, that enlightened being. Uh, from acting on behalf of others, and that will be done uh, without the need to be um, so it was the word, supplicated. You don't have to ask the Buddhas to save you. The Buddhas will uh, manifest their, uh, their, their enlightened activities spontaneously wherever they uh, will be most effective. Uh, and so the example is like that. A skilled physician uh, will carry out his, uh, you know, his knowledge, his his trade, or his um, skills. He will, he will apply his skills uh, without um, without the need of uh, being asked to do so. <laughs> Yeah, 
So the fourth argument is uh, uh, re related to the final epithet, the epithet of being a savior, Goa. Uh, and so it says, now now we've reached the point <coughs> where we're talking about Buddha Shakyamuni, Dabjati Bamba. So we're, all the three uh, other arguments were describing different stages up into the final moment of enlightenment. So now, Dachagi uh, Pemba is Buddha Shakyamuni, Chirajin. That's the subject of the argument. Uh, then, that uh, uh, it, it's that being, Androa Dunyar Lansimi Kibute, he is the uh, author spiritually authoritative person, Tsimi Kibute. He was the person who we can rely on infallibly uh, about spiritual goals uh, as seekers of liberation ourselves. Uh, then, Kibute, uh, that person, uh, what that means to say that he is such is, uh, he is the omniscient one who knows uh, in in their entirety, all the means uh, by which one can become liberated or delivered from suffering. Uh, and then, uh, so uh, why? why? Why can we make that uh, assertion? Why, why is that the predicate of the argument? Because then he has become uh, the, the savior. And the meaning of the episode of the savior is uh, uh, and God's doing it, and draw it top. Oh, so it says, right? By the power of compassion, so compassion is culminated. Uh, then, just as he himself has accurately seen what all the means are for freeing some oneself or anyone from suffering, uh, by the power of compassion, then uh, he has the ability uh, to save others by revealing that knowledge uh, unerringly to others. So he is a person who has gained that uh, ability or that power the power that is inherent or is implied by the epithet savior, uh, and that power is one which is uh, has is, is perfect. The kachiba means it has been brought to its completion, and having uh, achieved that status, then uh, it has the ability to uh, save others by teaching them that unerring, those unerring methods. So that's the argument, the last part of it. He's explaining he, uh, that uh, we can say that about him, that he is the infallible uh, spiritual authority because he's attained that ultimate uh, quality, that power that enables him to save others by teaching them. So then the, the example that's formulated here is uh, then uh, this resembles the manner, or for example, a skilled physician uh, so that skilled physician will be able to um, provide uh, the, the medicine or the healing uh, uh, the means uh, that will overcome an illness in an unerring manner. Gorimachupa uh, means without uh, showing how to apply the medicine in the proper order or sequence or manner. Uh, and in that way, establishing uh, the sick person into a state of uh, well-being where he or she is free of illness. And then, and then he identifies verses uh, one, uh, this is now the end of this first part of the chapter, which is around 130, verse 135, 146, which is describing that the attribute of the Savior.
So the two um, presentations are meant to establish and two kinds of causes. One is called Geje Gyu. Geje means uh, the productive cause or the cause which brings something about, you know, uh, in, in the sense of what uh, what is the generating cause of the result of enlightenment that, res that uh, can establish that the Buddha is the ultimate spiritual authority. Uh, so those two uh, uh, qualities of compassion and wisdom are the main causes that produce the attainment of uh, abandoning all the obstacles and uh, achieving the quality that gives you the ability to teach to others. So uh, um, those four uh, topics then uh, are meant to um, refute the mistaken notion that there are no genuine causes that can bring about the attainment of enlightenment. And then the reverse uh, presentation is uh, a way of um, explaining the causes that make known uh, how uh, one becomes uh, uh, one can one can uh, verify that the Buddha became a spiritual authority so the evidence of his being the savior is that he taught the Four Noble Truths on Aaron. And then that's evidence that he must have attained the state of being a Sugata in which all the uh, perfection of knowledge is attained. And the attainment of the perfection of knowledge must have been preceded, in, in order to possess that quality, it must have been preceded by uh, the wisdom that perceives selflessness. 
and the motivating clause that uh, prompted that him to uh, to seek that knowledge had to be uh, come prior to that had to be a, a precondition for that, which is that he wanted to benefit others. So that uh, presentation in reverse is. Sheva Shejekiku, Shejekiku is makes known the clauses that make known uh, the reasons why we can um, uh, be certain that the Buddha is a true spiritual disciple. <laughs> シェルタンダバタギディニャンスタミトチシティニトチシティニカジスニンデセンブリアサンケゲトワナントメレトレタプステンバシナンドルスンバティチェサンケラニギタプティラナンドルスンバティサンケクランディ ま、ケンバチェンドスンバレスタジェルチティ。ウシサンケラニギタプティ。レパルケネスンバイエナムイニャンチェバチティス。ティチェバチェバティアニトメレトレタプス。ティシナンドルチャジュソチタスンマタベ
of the subject matter that he taught, right? And then uh, there is a uh, there is a verse uh, in the in the text in the drama the second chapter. Um, I don't remember exactly where it occurs, but it's very famous, quoted all the time, in which it is said that Tab Jung Tab Jung means the goals. Usually Tab means meat, but there's another uh, form of the word. Usually the word Upaya is means. And there's another form of which Upaya, which is the future participle, and means tab, translates Tab Jung. And that means the goals. So the goals. Uh, and the means of attaining those goals. If one, if they remain hidden to someone, because if you don't know, but in true sense, you have complete full knowledge what the goals are and what are the ways of attaining those goals, then how could you possibly teach them to someone else? And so this argument is kind of the flip side of that, which is saying, those goals and the means of attaining those goals were taught, we can examine that speech, we can determine that speech to be flawless, and so from that we can infer he must have attained that knowledge in order to have given that to us. Did <laughs> だって、デビュータレスな。あ、で、デビュータレスな。あ、シェチェチチです。あれ。あ、シェチェチチです。あれ。あの、で、ヒランドと、で、サンキュー、スンティ、ジャパンのタイで。あの、で、あの、で、あ
and then it says uh, that the Buddha is free of all fears. He may not have the ability, right? He may not have the knowledge for how to free your, free you from that fear. So he has to. One of the reasons that he is worthy to take refuge in is because uh, he does have the knowledge uh, about how to free yourself from uh, those fears, from, from samsara, and so. Yeah. That's one necessary cause. The other one is, even if he has that knowledge, he might not uh, share it. He might not uh, teach what he knows to others so that they can uh, gain freedom. So if he doesn't have both of those qualities, then we would not, uh, we would not feel justified in taking refuge in So we need to prove both of those qualities, that so he has the complete knowledge and that he has a compassion to teach. And so that's what the, those epithets are in their totality uh, meant to establish. Uh, so that's the ultimate aim for, for, a step, for, for understanding that argument is so that we can determine that in fact the Buddha is a worthy object in which we should take refuge. Yeah, that is it. Manan あ、ジャバチクベアは、ジバチクベアでこう、ね、そのことね、ジバチクベア。てね、あ、に、ジャバチクベア。ジャバチカレスに、ね、そのことね、ジベ、ジバチで、今日もね、ジャバチクベア。
uh, it is uh, right or worthy or proper that we take refuge in the Buddha. Uh, that why is why is that so? Why why are we justified in taking refuge in the Buddha? So. In addition to the motivating cause of fear that we, we have a we have a need, uh, our own failings, then uh, the reason for taking refuge, the second reason for taking refuge is faith. And the faith in the Buddha particularly is that the Buddha has the ability or power to save us. That power coming from, or that ability coming from his ultimate knowledge. And that's usually the way of stating the second motivating clause. So those are, in the Lamrim, those are the two main motivating clauses. But in, uh, in the oral instruction, uh, then as a form of Mahayana practice, a third clause is added, and that is compassion, meaning that uh, we should have uh, a, a, motiv a Mahayana motivation when we take refuge, and therefore we should not only be concerned with eliminating our own uh, fears or our own problems, uh, but problems of others as well. But in that second clause, the one of faith, which says that Buddha, we should develop a faith in which we are confident that the Buddha possesses the ability or the power uh, to uh, provide us with the means of salvation. It's important to recognize that it's not enough that he that a Buddha has that power, but also that we can be also confident or sure that the Buddha will in fact um, act upon that ability, that he will make use of that ability, and and that we can we can we can rely on on the fact that he will do so. So the act of taking refuge is one in which we. We place our hopes in some object, in the Buddha in particular. And sometimes we place our hope in something and that hope is uh, unfulfilled. So the act of taking refuge should not that be that kind of uh, empty hope. And in order for us to be sure that it wouldn't be, we have to be confident. Not only the Buddha has the ability, which is... Uh, gained through having the ultimate knowledge, but also that he is under the influence of compassion, and that compassion would virtually compels him uh, to share that knowledge. So before what just said, sometimes people have the ability or the knowledge uh, to teach another person, but they might not teach another person for a variety of reasons. One might be they, uh, they themselves are under the influence of attachment or bias, and they might not want to help a certain particular type of person, so they have to have the full compassion that would uh, not limit them in who they would be willing to share that knowledge with, or they would not withhold that knowledge. Another reason for withholding knowledge that often is talked about in the scriptures is that certain persons are uh, unwilling to share what they know because they they want to, they don't want anyone else uh, to uh, gain some unique knowledge that they have. They want to be the exclusive uh, holder of a certain knowledge. So the various, the various types of ways that might motivate someone uh, to withhold their knowledge, to fail to share their knowledge. And then the uh, Buddha is not subject to those limitations. Padati is a third and the tea and the tea. And Tumba Sangeti, so much in the Kumba touching the Sanitar. Tumba Sangeti kept tenure. Pemba Vashiti, we should make him the Sunday Maris. Paris and Mipi, 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 Mamisunati, so I mean teaching the touching of his. That in a city road to Sunday with a city road to Sunday Maris, Chamba touching of his. So, 
So the ultimate purpose for um, establishing the authority of the Buddha is to determine that he is the uh, ultimate uh, object in whom we might take refuge. So uh, one way of thinking uh, that we have no, no reason to doubt uh, that the Buddha might be uh, a valid source in whom to take refuge. Uh, the way of knowing that, one way of knowing that is that because of his compassion, he would never teach something uh, that would not be of benefit. He would never teach anything that would be harmful. His compassion would not allow him to say anything to us that might cause us harm. The nature of compassion is to want to free you from your suffering. So that compassion would be antithetical to the compassion to teach something that might be harmful. So we can be confident in him as this object of refuge by knowing that he has cult cultivated compassion to its highest form. And also, not enough that he has the inclination to be beneficial, to do something that will be helpful for us, but we also have to be confident that he would never teach us anything that would be false or inaccurate. And then we can be certain about that on the basis of the fact that we understand him to have complete knowledge. So that complete knowledge uh, gives him the uh, awareness of what the correct methods are. So that knowledge is the basis for teaching unerringly what will serve us in a spiritual sense. And, uh, and uh, uh, among those the forms of knowledge, uh, among the methods that he teaches, and the most important method that he teaches is uh, how to gain the wisdom that receive selflessness. Uh, especially that's the unique form of knowledge that only the Buddhas possess. Ah, uh, yeah. That in a... Then I'm given a job new, but I'm job a tough labor to be one in ケプシルチンのタジャウトバカナケプシルバ。ねえ、ジブチマイノス。だって。だって。うん。だって、シャリンさん。ジバレイトムネバタルジョベ。タブレバルトベ。ね。ね、ケプシル。え、ジジギケ
based on his ultimate knowledge, then we can conclude from that that because uh, he uh, does in fact uh, provide the refuge or provide the means of uh, freeing ourselves from our fear through teaching uh, the means of gaining uh, the ultimate form of refuge uh, then uh, we can conclude that the Buddha alone, uh, the, uh, our, it says it, Atajagutemba means, it means the, the teacher of, of uh, Buddhism, our teacher, he's a teacher of, uh, of who, who is Buddha Shakyamuni, he alone uh, is the supreme authority, uh, spiritual authority in whom uh, it is proper to take refuge. Oh yeah, that's the name. That's the Kama Chutu, right? Kama Chutu. Kama Chutu, Georgi, yeah.
don't know that I'm going to do this correctly, but I'll try. Okay, so I guess then what the final bit would then be that, that if you define um, valid cognition as, uh, I'm sorry, perception as Dokta Tang Joshin Machuri Rikpa, a knower that is unmistaken and non conceptual, would then the non conceptual part apply to the objective aspect and the unmistaken? Part applied to the subjective aspect. No, but then there's in Matrobe Rikpa. Matrobe Rikpa. Does one apply? Does one part apply to the objective, and the other part apply to the subject? <laughs> Sorry. Because we're going to get a more semi cortic, quarter of the semi cort, monsoon, or a calzatic. ま、もしやっちゃうね。あのね、プランギ、プランセミナーかよっていないよ。だから、ちょっと運転で運転。シネストロップソルチセナ。プランギ、サムラタカサ、セムラバゲルドラ。あの、ランギュバメンチェクド
Okay. So when you <coughs> say sumnam, uh, it's the uh, the sum of sumnam is the object. So the color blue, for example. But uh, and so then zin, right? In zinnam is referring to the self-awareness, which is simultaneous with the perception of blue. It is a subjective quality of the mind that perceives not the blueness, but perceives the self, uh, the sensory consciousness that perceives blue. But the sensory consciousness itself that perceives blue, that is sunnah. Sunnam is not the object, it's the, the, the eye consciousness that directly perceives it. And it's called Sunnam because it's perceiving a, 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 like a dualistic object. Zinnam means a, another kind of mind that only holds mental states. So the object of the Zinnam is the eye consciousness. And it's sort of like the witness. The witness is the zinna. It's not conceptual. It's directly experiencing that eye consciousness. Then the jeshe, jeshe derma, di dokpa, jeshe derma is the, the uh, recognition or the subsequent cognition or that is, is conceptual, identified with memory even. Uh, which is they're all typically conceptual, and that is not a cog and that is not a form of uh, correct cognition in this form, right? As, so yeah. the second moment of perception, it's it, 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 <laughs> the jeshe, even though it's a jeshe. Uh -huh. It's so the jeshe the jeshe niwala shagerebe yan jeshe the jeshe niwala shagere. You, uh -huh. you can say it comes in the second moment, right? And and jeshe kuna tokare. Jeshe kuna tokare. Yini jeshe ta tokare jeshe tini yari jeshe kuna. So there are two kinds of subsequent cognitions. Subsequent cognitions that occur in relation to direct perception, and subsequent cognitions that occur in relation to conceptions. Yaku Daniel ka shebri mishu niga tokare. Tanyeti So there is this so-called subsequent cognition of the direct perception, and then there are other uh, subsequent cognitions of conceptual minds. Both of them are considered conceptual minds, but one of them is generated by a direct perception. One of them is generated by a, a, a conceptual mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Thank you.